today on Macaulay Math, we're finding the area between two curves. Intro. Okay, good day. I'm Professor McCulley. This is Math 200, Calculus 1, Lesson 27 on finding the area between two curves. Our goals for today. We're going to find the area of the region between two curves using integration. We're going to find the area between two intersecting curves using integration. And we're going to describe integration as an accumulation process. In our final lesson for this course, we will discuss how to find the area between two curves, even when those two curves intersect. And while we have touched on this subject before, we will again discuss ways to describe integration as an accumulation process. Let's get started. The area of a region between curves, if f and g are continuous functions on a to b, and the function f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all x in the closed interval from a to b, then the area of the region bounded by f and g between the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is given as a equal to the definite integral from a to b of the difference of f of x and g of x dx. And so what does that look like? Here is a diagram and we can call this top function f of x and we can call this bottom function g of x. Then the green region here from two to 12 we would represent as the a is equal to the integral from two to 12 of f of x minus g of x dx. Now that's fine and good if f of x is always greater than g of x, but as a, for instance, we have functions that intersect with each other. And so for this particular example, we're going to call the blue function f of x and the red function g of x. And from a to b, f of x is above g of x, but from b to c, g of x is above f of x. So to get the area of these two regions that have been enclosed by the two functions, we're going to have to separate it into two integrals. And so we will write the area, the total area, will be the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. And then to that, we will add the integral from b to c of g of x minus f of x dx. And we should put parentheses around that like that. All right, the integral as an accumulator. We're doing all these integrals and we want to understand what can we actually use this stuff for. And so one of the applications that we can talk about is the integral as an accumulator. The area under the curve is all of the sums for the values under that function. So here we're gonna talk about a really over simplistic example so that you can try and understand this a little bit better. Let's say, as an example, that you earn $5 a day for eight days. How much do you have at the end of the week? Well, the answer is add up $5 for each of the eight days and you'll get 40. We can also think of it and just say that it is $5 a day, the rate, times the eight days to get $40. But think of the problem in terms of an earnings function which we're going to call a differential equation. Think of it this way. That $5 per day is a rate. It is the change in earnings per the change in time. $5 per day. Since it's a differential equation as a constant function, this is our rate in terms of $5 per day. Over eight days, this area enclosed here is the sum of those days. We can think of this and say that our total earnings is the integral from zero to eight 
of this rate function in terms of time, which would give us 5t from 0 to 8, 5 times 8 minus 5 times 0 would give us $40. The same as this area right there. All right, example. Sketch the region bounded by the graphs of the algebraic function and then find the area of the shaded region. So our first function is going to be y equals negative x to the third plus 3. Our second function will be y equal to x. And then to bound the region, it'll go from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 1. That function looks like this. Here is our negative x to the third plus 3. Here is our y equals 1. Here is x equals negative 1. Here is x equals positive 1. And so we have this region. Now to set up that function, our red function here is going to be the highest function over that interval. And our y equals x function will be our lower function. And then x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1 will be the upper and lower limits of integration. So we can write that. We'll say a is equal to the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 of negative x to the third plus 3 minus x dx. Let's say we want to use a calculator to evaluate that definite integral for us. And let's bring up Desmos to do that for us. So here I have Desmos. Let's type in those two functions as f of x and g of x. And so let's for our first one say that f of x is equal to negative x to the third plus three. Let's say that g of x is equal to just x. And then let's also finally say x equal to negative, negative one and x equal to positive one. And so we can see this region that was shown in the previous example, but we wanna find this area under the curve and Desmos will do that for us. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pull up the functions menu and we'll go over to this miscellaneous tab and down here you can see the definite integral. And so when I click the definite integral, we wanna go from negative one to positive one and we could retype everything, but since I've already defined these two functions, f of x and g of x, I can just go parentheses f of x minus g of x dx, and it will calculate it for us, and we get the final answer, 6. So when we go back to this function, we can just type in right here, 6. There's our answer. Next, we're going to sketch the region bounded by the graphs of the functions and find the area of the region over the interval. And so our first function, f of x, is sine x, and our second function, g of x, is cosine of 2x. And we're talking about the integral from negative pi over 2 is less than x is less than positive pi over 2. So the, if I plug that into my graphing calculator, that function will look like this function right here. And we can clearly see that our g of x function, this blue function right here, is going to be the top function from this first point at negative pi over 2 until we get to some point over here. Now, we're going to have to figure out what that point is to get our final integral. And then it's going to switch. And then the sine function, the red curve, will be the top function from wherever this point is until we get to the end of the interval at pi over 2. So we want to calculate this, but we want to do it in Desmos. And so one of the reasons that I wrote it like this in the first example is so that I could come in here and I could just switch some of these values that I wanted to have. So our first one was sine of x. And then the next one was the cosine of 2x. And we have to move some things around a little bit here and we'll start seeing it. And then this was from negative pi 
over two, and this one was positive, pi over two. And so here is our interval that we're talking about right here from the red line to the blue line. And so over this interval, the start of our interval, until we get to this point right here, the cosine function is the higher function. So the G function is the higher function. And then when we get from this point, which we're gonna to have to figure out, and it's gonna be very simple, but we have to figure it out. From this point to the end of our interval, our F function, our sine function is gonna be the higher function. So we just have to come down here and we're going to add them together. So we're gonna start over and we're going to first figure out what this point is. And so when we look for that intersection right there, it is at pi over six. So our integral is going to be, and we'll go back and we'll open up functions and we'll hit that integral function. So we're gonna go from negative pi over two all the way to pi over six. That's where these two intersect. And it is the cosine function is on top. So parentheses will go g of x minus f of x dx. And then we're going to add to that from here at pi over six to pi over two, our purple sine function is above the black cosine function. So again, we're gonna hit functions, we're gonna hit that integral. And this time we're going to go pi over six to pi over two. And this one will be f of x minus g of x and we'll dx and our total sum of those two regions is going to be 2.598 so we'll come back down here and we will write it all in and we'll say that our area is equal to the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 6 of g of x minus f of x dx plus the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of f of x minus g of x dx and that will all be equal to 2.598 box around that and we'll call it done example professor mccully starts his wild widgets business in 2020 both the rates for the costs and the revenues can be modeled by c of x equals 1.5 x plus 10 and r of x equals 2.5 x where c and r are both in dollars and time is in months graph the function and then determine how long before Professor McCulley's Wild Widgets profit starts increasing. There's my part A. So let's graph those two functions and go to Desmos. And we see we have a expression that looks like this. So our red curve is the cost function at 1.5. And the R function, the revenue function at 2.5x, we have this. So until we get to this point right here, the costs are more than the revenues. So until we get to this point right here at 1025, the costs are more than the revenues. So we are technically losing money until we get there. So our first answer for part A will be it will take until x is equal to 10 before Professor
In the context of the problem, what does the definite integral from 10 to 36 of r of x minus c of x represent? So in b, so let's take a look at the graph again. Here is 36 right here, and we can represent that by 36 comma zero right there. And so if we wanna see that region, what we can do is since C of X is below it, we can say that C of X is less than Y is less than R of X. And then we can give it a range and we can say from 10 is less than X is less than 36. All right. So our region right here, what does this region represent? We're talking about the area between the curves and that integral that is represented by that is the accumulation of the difference of the costs and the revenues. So it represents the total area of the profit that we make from months 10 to 36. And that's how we're going to finish it up. This region, represents the profit earned by wild widgets from the 10th month to the 36th month. All right, last example, find the area of the region between y sub one is equal to absolute value x and y sub two equals 0 0.08 x squared plus some k. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta find a k where y one is tangent to the graph of y two. So the absolute value graph is our y one. So if I look at this, remember, Absolute value is gonna be a V graph. So this one right here is gonna be my Y1 and this one right here is gonna be my Y2. So we need to find some value K right here so that these two things are tangent to each other. And so basically we wanna find a point of tangency where this line has the same tangency as this blue curve. Now the good news is that y1 is going to have a constant slope because it's an absolute value function. And that slope is going to be negative one from negative infinity to zero, and then it'll be positive one from zero to positive infinity. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to, for part A, we're going to take the derivative for y sub two, all right. So y sub two is given as 0.08x squared plus k. It's first derivative, so I will have 0.16x, and the derivative of k, it's a constant, so it disappears. Now I know, again, the slope of the absolute value function is negative one and positive one. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to set it, set this I'm gonna set it equal to one so that I can find the value for X. Where the slope of y1 y2 is equal to 1 all right so 0.16x is equal to 1 and if I do the division, I get x equal to 6.25. Now, because both our y1 and y2 are symmetric about the y-axis, we can say 
that our x values are going to be both positive and negative. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what value we can plug in for k so that we get 6.25. Now the other good news is that this point, because it's the absolute value function, that this point right here and that point right there are at 6.25, 6.25, and this one right here is negative 6.25, 6.25. So all I have to do is take that y2 function, y2 equals 0.08x squared plus k and plug in 6.25 for both x and y. 6.25 equals 0 0.08 times 6.25 squared plus k. So I need to solve this and we'll get k equal to this 6.25 minus this expression here 0 0.08 8 times 6.25 squared, and if you plug that into a calculator, you get a k value equaling to 3.125. And so now we have found the k value where y1 is tangent to the graph of y2. So our two equations are going to be y sub 1 is equal to the absolute value of x, and y sub 2 is equal to 0.08x squared plus 3.125. Now, if you are unsure that you are correct, you can always go to Desmos. And here we go. y1 equals absolute value x and y2 equals 0.08x squared plus 3.125. And if I click on the point of intersection, 6.25, 6.25. So we're happy with that particular value for K. So for part B, it says find the area of the shaded region. Now, Y equals absolute value X is technically a piecewise function. It has a slope of negative one from negative infinity to zero and then a slope of positive one from zero to positive infinity. And our second function is always going to be above the absolute value function. Now the good news is both of these functions are symmetrical about the y axis. So I don't have to do it as a piecewise function. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find the area of this region here, and then I'm gonna multiply it by two. Now because the parabola is above the absolute value function. When I go to write this integral for part B, it is going to be two times, because we're only gonna do the right-hand side, so we're gonna multiply by two to get both areas. And we'll go from zero to 6.25. Since the parabola is above the absolute value function, we're going to go 0.08x squared plus 3.125. And from that, we're going to subtract just the x function. And we'll have that dx. And then we're going to put that into our Desmos calculator. So here, we're going to go back to our functions. We'll hit that integral button. And we are going to put a 2 times out in front. And then we'll go from 0 to 6.25. And then we will have our 0.08x raised to the second power plus 3.125. And then from that, we're going to subtract just x, we'll put our dx, and our area will be 132 We'll round up the 8 there and make it a 1, 13.021. That's our area. And that's all I got for today, folks. So, I'll 
of Star Wars fun fact of the day. In Star Wars canon, the size of each quote-unquote Death Star, this third one isn't technically a Death Star, has in increased with it each iteration. And so Death Star 1 was 160 kilometers across, Death Star 2 was 200 kilometers across, and Star Killer Base was 666 kilometers in diameter. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. Have a good day. Bye.